Hello, menopause students. Here I am again, your menopause tailor. I'm teaching you all the facts about menopause. And sometimes learning the facts requires you to also learn about the misconceptions. Today, I'm going to discuss one of the biggest misconceptions in the world of menopause. Heck, it's one of the biggest mis misconceptions in the world of women. Can you guess what it is? It's the word hysterectomy and all that it implies. And in the realm of menopause and misconceptions, all that it does not imply. <laughs> this is the beginning of a series of tutorials that I'll be giving you on some critical aspects of menopause. In the next video, I'll discuss sudden menopause as opposed to gradual menopause. And then in the one after that, I'll discuss premature menopause. After that, I'll discuss fibroids, and then I'll teach you all about endometriosis. All of these things can have a profound effect on your menopause and its management. So this is video number 132, and this series of tutorials will go all the way through 140. By the time we're through, you're going to know a lot. So why should you watch this video on hysterectomy? because many people have hysterectomy all wrong. In fact, so many people have it wrong that if you have it right, they think you're wrong. <laughs> yep, that's right. The topic of hysterectomy is so misconceived that nearly everyone has the same misconceptions. Test yourself. See if you can answer this quiz question. What does total hysterectomy mean? A. Removal of the uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. B. Removal of the uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. C. Removal of the uterus and cervix. D. Removal of the uterus. E. The onset of menopause. F. A and E above. G. B and E above. What's the answer? If you're like the majority of women, you answered G. If you're like the minority of women, you answered B. And if you're a student of menopause, Taylor's Menopause University, you answered C. Here it is again with the correct answer in bold. What does total hysterectomy mean? It means removal of the uterus and cervix. Was that easy? Or are you shocked? Well, how about this one? What does partial hysterectomy mean? A, removal of the cervix, but not the uterus. B, removal of your uterus and cervix, but not the fallopian tubes and ovaries. C, removal of the uterus, cervix, and fallopian tubes, but not the ovaries. D, Removal of the uterus and fallopian tubes, but not the cervix and ovaries. E, removal of the uterus, but not the cervix. F, removal of the fallopian tubes and ovaries, but not the uterus and cervix. <laughs> Was that one easier? <laughs> Did it clarify the first one or confuse you further? <laughs> Do you see why this is a big misconception for most women? Here it is again with the correct answer in bold. What does partial hysterectomy mean? It means removal of the uterus, but not the cervix. So the answer is E. And don't worry if you got them wrong. I promise that after watching this video, you will never get them wrong again. I'm not going to give you a complete anatomy lesson here because I did that way back in video number seven. And in video number eight, I taught you all this nitty gritty about gynecologic surgical procedures. And that's why those of you have, who have watched these videos in order probably answered the quiz questions correctly. But since this is such a problematic topic, and because so many of you don't watch the videos in order, I'm addressing this again although more directly than I did in the previous video, number eight. So, you see this prop? I made it. It's nothing but a chopping board with some food items on it. 
but the food items represent your reproductive organs. The pear represents your uterus and your cervix. The string beans represent your fallopian tubes. And the walnuts represent your ovaries. So let's concentrate on this pear for a bit. I just said that this pear represents two of the four parts of your reproductive tract. It represents your uterus and your cervix. But notice, you can't see any demarcation between the two parts. All you see is a whole pair. So how can it represent two things? Well, it's because your cervix dips down into your vagina. So, we're going to use this toilet paper roll to represent your vagina. So now you can see only the wide part of the pear. It's the part that's above your vagina. And this wide part of the pear is called the uterus. So you have two structures that comprise the whole pair. And when your doctor looks into your vagina to do your pap smear, he can see your cervix. It's in there. All the way at the top of your vagina. He cannot see your uterus from your vagina. And that's because it's up inside your pelvis, attached to your cervix, but hidden from view. So, I have two other representations of what that's like. This is a model that shows your vagina. Not your vagina, but you know, a vagina. And at the top of the vagina, way up top there, you see that round thing that looks like a donut? That's the cervix. And when you look into the vagina, you can see the cervix. But when you look into the vagina, you can't see all this other stuff here because it's up inside your pelvis above the vagina. So the only part you can see from the vagina is the cervix. This is another model. And this is a cut down the center of a body. And what you see here is the vagina. And at the top of the vagina, this part right there is the cervix. The uterus is all this here, and it's up inside. You can't see all this from here. All you can see is right there. That's the cervix. Okay, so now that you have your bearings and you have some orientation as to what things are, we're going to change the wording a bit. And this is where you're going to have that aha moment. Instead of saying whole pair, Let's say total uterus. This is the whole pair, but it's also the total uterus. So this whole pair is the same thing as this, which is the total uterus from this model I just showed you. Okay? So the whole pair is the total uterus. This is the total uterus, meaning the uterus and the cervix. This is the whole pair, meaning the fat part and the thin part. So the medical word for removal of your uterus is hysterectomy. So what does total hysterectomy mean? It, remains, it means removal of the total uterus, the whole thing, which means removal of both your uterus and your cervix. So it means removal of the whole pair. Either way, it's the whole thing, both pieces, the uterus and the cervix. That's the key right there. If you have a total hysterectomy, your doctor will no longer see your cervix when he looks into your vagina because it's gone. A total hysterectomy removes your cervix. It removes the whole pair, which used to be here. So this is all gone. All you have is the vagina closed at the top. So that brings us 
to the second quiz question. What's a partial hysterectomy? Well, I'll show you. It's a partial hysterectomy. A partial hysterectomy only remo removes part of the pair. It removes the wide portion that is above your vagina and in your abdomen. <gasps> but it leaves your cervix in place. So there's the vagina with the cervix still attached. If you have a partial hysterectomy, your doctor still sees your cervix when he looks into your vagina. It's still there. So this is a total hysterectomy, and this is a partial hysterectomy. Now let's look at my prop after either type of hysterectomy. Your job is to, turn, to determine if either type causes menopause. Here's what it looks like after a partial hysterectomy. You see what you have? You see the vagina. You see the cervix. You see the fallopian tubes. And you see the ovaries. So does a partial hysterectomy cause menopause? Which structures are responsible for menopause? Your ovaries. And they're still there. So partial hysterectomy does not cause menopause. Next, here's what it looks like after a total hysterectomy. What do you see? You see the vagina, you see the fallopian tubes, and you see the ovaries. So, does a total hysterectomy cause menopause? No! The ovaries are still here. The ovaries are responsible for menopause, not your uterus or your cervix. The problem is that most people have the misconception that a total hysterectomy causes menopause and a partial hysterectomy does not. Do you see how many layers of misconception are involved with that? Nothing about a hysterectomy causes menopause. Hysterectomy is all about your uterus. Menopause is all about your ovaries. Okay? Big, big difference. The reason they pe most people think a hysterectomy causes menopause is because they don't know the difference between these two types of hysterectomy. They mistakenly think that a total hysterectomy mean, means removal of all of these parts, with the exception of your vagina. They think total hysterectomy means removing all of this. And now you know that's not true. This is absolutely incorrect. A hysterectomy, whether total or partial, has absolutely nothing at all to do with your ovaries. So it has absolutely nothing at all to do with menopause. And yet, just about everyone has this all wrong. Even people in the medical profession have it all wrong. Do this. Conduct an experiment. Go ask 100 people what total hysterectomy means. I guarantee that 99% of them will get it wrong. This experiment will show you firsthand how severely ignorant most people are about even the most common things having to do with menopause. That's why it's so important for all women to get this education. Of course, if you've been watching my videos, you already know how eye-opening all these videos are and this education is, but most women have their heads stuck in the sand and they are clueless. So ask them that one question and then explain the facts to them when they prove that they are all wrong. You can even use a pair like I do. <laughs> okay, so much for my homemade props. <laughs> but I'll tell you this, 
I will bet that you'll never forget the props I've shown you today. And I will bet that you'll never forget what a total hysterectomy is either. So there you have it for today. Join me in a week when I'll teach you the differences between gradual menopause and sudden menopause. And that's going to be one you cannot afford to miss. If you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, go to my website, menopausetailor.me, and I'll tail tailor everything specifically to your personal situation and make it all very easy for you. Until next week, I'll tell you goodbye. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram in the meantime, and be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you get this education and you're not clueless. Okay, I'll see you in a week. Bye.